In the cast, I'm going to discuss integration in cylindrical coordinates. I'm going to do two example problems. The first one doesn't actually involve any integration. Uh, as you've come to realize by now, I'm sure that the, the issue with these different coordinate systems isn't the actual integration, but the setting up of the limits of integration correctly and understanding just the coordinate systems. So I've given a, a problem that doesn't involve any integration. And what you're asked to do is simply express the following volume and cylindrical coordinates. And the volume is, you're told it's above this surface and below that surface. Now hopefully you'll recognize straight away that this is a circular paraboloid. And it may be less obvious to you, but this is a cone. All right, so let's get to it. Again, let me just say one final time. If these expressions were more complicated or if it were less clear to you what, uh, what the representation of these of these Cartesian equations was in cylindrical coordinates, you might actually have to make the substitution that x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta into these expressions to arrive at um, the corresponding equations in cylindrical coordinates r, theta, and z. In this case, though, we can just see uh, directly what this will give. This will give the equation in cylindrical coordinates z is equal to r squared. And this will give the equation z is equal to 5 minus r. All right, and even though you're not asked to plot this, uh, you do want to plot it just to get some, some sense of it. And in fact, I'm going to plot it first in just what would be cylindrical coordinates. It's independent of, it's independent of theta. There is no theta in this expression. So let's plot r and z, what these look like. Let's go ahead and do it in blue here. So this this, um, this paraboloid is something like this. Um, the and the uh, this this cone is five minus r. So again, it'll it'll be a straight line in this um, in this viewpoint that I plotted here, which is z in r coordinates. And I'll go up about five. So that's about five, and it has slope minus one. And uh, well, it's not too bad. Let me make it a little straighter here. That's not perfect, but that uh, that'll be okay. Now, what we need uh, in order to actually have a full expression of what this volume is, we need to find where these two point, where these two um, curves in in R Z. And I should have said, and I'll show you in a minute. Of course, this whole thing is then will be rotated around the Z axis to give the full three dimensional volume. But here, before doing that, let me just um, we need to find this point of intersection here. Let's give it a name. Let's call it R C, all R zero R C. All right. So we have to find that value, and we're going to find it just by equating these two equations. So what we have is um, R squared will be equal to five minus R. We then go have to about solve that. That's a quadratic equation. It seems to be R C. Oh, I should say that's when R is equal to R C. You have a quality between this and this. That gives me rc is equal to root 21 minus 1 over 2, which is approximately 1.8. So that's why I say this picture isn't exactly uh, quantitatively accurate, but qualitatively it is. Let me just go ahead and draw, attempt a sketch, a full three-dimensional sketch. I won't take too much time here. Okay. Again, it's so it's some paraboloid here. It's going to go out. If it's going to go out, out. Uh, to about two, and therefore up to about here. I would have some paraboloid. All right, and then I have my downward facing cone, which is something like this. And they intersect along this circle. All right, so anyway, that's some, some view of what the, the geometry looks like in three dimensions. All right, you weren't asked to produce those sketches, but I always think it's a good idea. Anyway, so let's write down what the um, what this volume is then. This volume omega would be the set of in, in, uh, cylindrical coordinates r, theta, z, where r is going to be between naught and this expression, root 21 minus 1 over 2. Theta is um, the full range from naught to 2 pi. And z, which I'll write down here, z is going to go from, basically that was stated in the question itself, it's going to go from, from r squared to five minus r. And so that's the volume, that's a picture of it, and that's its expression in cylindrical coordinates. All right, and if you were asked to integrate something over this volume, you would now have the limits of integration and you could proceed to, to do the question. All right, let's go to another, another uh, problem. Here you're asked to compute the mass of the solid 
inside the cylinder, so you're inside the cylinder, x squared plus y squared equal one, above the paraboloid, um, so you're given a paraboloid here, and below the plane, z equal four. And then in order to compute mass, you have to be given the density. You're just told here it's proportional to um, the distance from the axis of the cylinder. All right, so let's, I'm gonna real quickly do a sketch of this um, volume. All right, so what are the main points? The main points are that there's, that you have this cylinder of radius one, so I'm going to attempt to draw a circle there, radius one, in perspective. And then I'm going to, uh, I know that I'm going to start basically at z equals zero, and I'm going to go up to z equal four, so this is a length of two, so I have to go up about twice that, so I have to go up to about this height. This isn't going to be one of my best sketches, but hey. All right, so that's my cylinder of radius one. And uh, let's just go ahead and label here. So this is z is equal to four. Okay, because that's going to be the upper plane. And then I have to, there's this paraboloid here. It's a downward paraboloid with z equal one, and it goes to the unit circle there. So it goes here, and it goes downwards. I'm doing this rather quickly. You would probably have to think about it a little bit more before you could sketch it, but there you go. So it's this region inside here. It's a solid region. You see it's above this paraboloid here. So basically you have a finite cylinder that goes from z equal zero to z equal four, and you've cut out this paraboloid out of the bottom of it here. And that's what that's the the, um, the solid region you have to integrate over. And then we need one more thing. We need to know what the density is, and you're just told it's proportional to distance from the axis of the cylinder. Well, that's just going to be the distance r in radial coordinates. Everybody see that r there? That's going to be, the, excuse me, the uh, distance, the radius r in cylindrical coordinates at some point. And so at any point, let's just write it here, the density will be proportional to, to r. That doesn't say, we'll write it as alpha r, but this is a proportionality constant. Okay, so we don't know its value, but we'll express the answer in terms of alpha. All right, so does, uh, hopefully everybody realizes this density here. Let's do, yeah, no, let's just do it like this. This 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 expression is a, a is a mathematical statement of the density being proportional to the distance from the axis of the cylinder. What I haven't done yet in order to write my integral, let me just do it here real real fast. Is I didn't write down what this region was in cylindrical coordinates, and let's just do it now. So r will be between naught and one. That's this this one in here. Okay, that's r equal one. Um, theta will go from naught to two pi. It doesn't always go from naught to two pi, but in most many questions it does. And then what does z go between? Z goes between uh, this paraboloid and and z equal four. That is to say, z will go between that paraboloid in cylindrical coordinates is one minus r squared and four. All right, so that's my region. So let's then write down the mass. The mass will be equal to the triple integral over that region of rho dv which we can now write in cylindrical coordinates by just reading off from here. R is going to go from naught to one. Theta will go from naught to two pi. Z will go from one minus R squared to four. The function we're going to integrate is alpha R. Then we're gonna have our volume element. And don't forget the R, it's R dz. We have to have the Z first because this is inner integral is over Z. This is the range of Z. So this Z has to appear first d theta dr. Now, I'm what, what I suggest, the way I would integrate this, and so therefore what I would suggest you do is first pull out things that, uh, that need pulling out. I'd pull this out, so that's just right over here. I'd pull the alpha out in front, because that's just a constant. And then I would separate off this theta integral. This theta integral, everything's independent of theta. I'd pull this out in front, not to two pi d theta. See, it separates in theta, so we don't need to worry about that. We can pull that out right away and then just leave the rest of this here, zero to one, our r integration, our z integration. We have an r squared dz dr. All right, so then again, I would just let you integrate this right away, and you see that this is gonna give you two pi alpha. That integral, that integral from zero to two pi d theta is gonna just give you two pi, so I have a two pi alpha. I leave my r integration. Oh, I can go ahead and integrate with respect to z now. So I'm gonna have an r squared, this is a constant with regard to the z integration. So I simply have z evaluated between one minus r squared and four. And then I still have my r integration. And that will give you, well look, it's just gonna be a polynomial. I'm running out of room here. It's just going to be a polynomial. Well, all right, I'll do one more. Two pi alpha, and go from naught to one of r squared. Then I'm gonna have a four minus one minus r squared. Uh, that's it, dr. 
right, so I'll let you just do that integration. That's a simple polynomial to integrate. You do that, you'll find that you have a 12 uh, pi over 5 alpha. So there has to be an alpha in the final answer because the density is proportional to alpha. And the geometry gives you this, um, this 12 pi over 5. All right, so those are my examples in integration on cylindrical coordinates.